Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is Cash, and guess what? We are at the halfway point of the eight week fitness challenge. This is week four. So what I wanted to do in today's video is pretty much just go back over everything that has transpired in the first three to four weeks, talking about nutrition, workout, recovery, and just the entire process from my personal experience and what I've had to overcome in these first four weeks. It's been an interesting journey. I've had some injuries, I've had some setbacks, but more than anything, I have been making progress aiming towards my goals and hitting my markers as we progress down the back end of these remaining four weeks. So I'm really excited to share this journey with you and I hope you stay tuned for the remaining portion of this video because it's gonna be a lot of good information. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. When it comes to the eight week fitness challenge, those first few weeks was more so about goal setting and just understanding the direction that I'm heading. You know, am I trying to put on more size? Am I trying to lean out? What is that question that I'm seeking? and what's the answer that I'm looking for at the same time. So for me personally, I wanted to seek out how can I lose weight in the most efficient way, still keeping the muscle that I've acquired over the past few months, but just kind of tone up a little bit. You know, to be honest with you, I had some extra weight around my midsection and my legs, you know, definitely didn't look good. And, uh, you know, I'm probably my biggest critic when it comes to just my overall aesthetic. But my friend D'Avion, who's been helping me out with this challenge, just decided to motivate me and challenge me to just lock in again and just to hit those goals of dropping my body fat percentage, losing some weight in targeted areas, and just trust the process as we continue on through the remaining four weeks of the challenge. So for me, I wanted to lose between 11 to 15 pounds. When I started this challenge, my body fat percentage was at 19%. So it's under 20%, which is you know, I could be happy about that, but I know I was being really lazy with my diet. Um, I was still having strong workouts, but you can't outwork a bad diet, to be honest. So I knew there was some room for me to make some changes and the changes that I did make created some significant results in a short amount of time here. So just to recap, my goal was to lose between 10 to 15 pounds, 11 to 15 pounds, get my body fat percentage down, um, last time I checked my body fat percentage, I was at 17%. I'm pretty sure that I'm lower than that at this point because uh, I've just been getting a lot of progress and I'm gonna talk about my numbers here in just a few moments. So I started off at week one at 234 pounds. Week two, I was down to 226, um, 226 to 228 pounds, just depending on what time I measure myself throughout the day. And week three is when I saw another huge leap and my progress, I got down to 222 pounds. So right there within three weeks, on the back end of the third week, I lost 11 pounds. And I'm still maintaining right now at 222 pounds right now. And it's very happy about the look and the weight that I've been able to lose throughout this process, but it didn't happen all at once. And part of the reason that I was able to hit this goal and such a short period of time of just getting close, just, just hitting 11 pounds in itself is just being consistent in the gym and consistent in the kitchen. That's really the truth right there. Once I made sure my diet was clean and no longer just consuming any processed foods and increasing my protein intake, and that's really the key area for me is that start tracking my calories and my protein intake to make sure I'm hitting those goals to give my body the, the nutrition. So I'm currently at 222 pounds. I am consuming between 160 to 200 grams of protein a day. Depending on which fitness influencers you look up, some people recommend that you try to get one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And some days I can do that. I don't hit that number every day, but I do know I'm staying close within that range and also getting results at the same time. So it, it, I would say if you can manage it, then go for it. But if it's not realistic, I wouldn't stress myself out on not hitting that number, but you do want to keep those numbers close to your body weight. So I decided to create a, a formula for myself where I do 0.7 instead of one. So 0.7 times your body weight and use that number as the minimum amount of protein you should consume. And then on the higher side is, of course, one times your body weight. And that's really the max. 
that you should need, especially when you're trying to get definition, start toning your body to see significant changes. So that's for the protein. And as we progress and look at carbohydrates and fats, here's where I really just kind of dialed in and said, you know what, let's start eliminating these foods here. So of course, processed foods is the first direction you have to look at. That's the first area that needs to be cleaned up. So get rid of the chips, get rid of the fast food stuff. None of that stuff's healthy for you when you're trying to hit your fitness goals. So I replaced all of that crap, started consuming more sweet potatoes, uh, quinoa, uh, avocados, uh, brown rice, um, of course, you know, your your healthy greens, making more kale salads. So all of your whole food items that you can find in the grocery store. So uh, you can see with my diet where my protein sources are coming from, I really don't do too many red meats. I uh, tend to stay like with the seafood or uh, different parts of chicken that I incorporate in my diet just to continue to hit my protein goals and finish the night off with another protein shake. So I'm doing about four meals a day just to make sure that I'm hitting my numbers. Like I said, as far as my carbs, you know, you have your broccoli, your asparagus, you have your kale, you have your cherry tomatoes. Of course, you guys already know fruits and vegetables is always going to be a part of my diet. Eating clean, eating healthy is the way to go um, just to assist your body with that additional boost to hit your fitness goals. Uh, as I stated before, there's no way you can outwork a bad diet. It's just a really gruesome uphill battle for you to pursue. I don't care how many minutes you put on the Stairmaster or the elliptical. I don't care how many squats you're doing. It's just an uphill battle, especially if you're trying to hit certain fitness goals. So when you get your life right in the kitchen and you're hitting the gym three to five days throughout the week. Me personally, I do five days a week. You don't have to do five days a week. I just love being at the gym. So um, I rotate my split between upper body, lower body. Um, so it's going to look something like one day I'll do a chest workout. It might be chest and triceps, um, back and biceps, leg day. Might throw some abs in on leg day and repeat that process for five days out of the week. Um, that's one method that you can do. Depending on if you have time, you might wanna take a look into doing an Arnold split where you just combine more of the muscle groups together. So you might do chest and back on the same day, you know, give legs its own specific day and then hit all of your arm muscle groups. So your shoulders, biceps and triceps all, all on the same day, just to be a little bit more efficient with your workout. And you can hit certain muscle groups twice throughout the week, depending on how much time that you have available. I have specific days of the week, Monday for me, and pretty sure for most guys feels like International Chest Day, Tuesday, back, Wednesday, leg day, Thursday, chest, Friday, back again. Um, that's my rotation, and you need to find out what works for you. And this is what I've been doing to hit my fitness goals throughout the first four weeks of this challenge. One thing I would recommend for anybody who's doing a challenge is make sure you take care of your body, listen to your body. When you have any parts of your body that feels tight, stiff, um, soreness, listen to that. You know, does it feel like muscle fatigue? Are you feeling strains, uh, any tightness in, in, in certain areas? Because not all fitness is just about weightlifting. Um, stretching the body also strengthens the body. So you wanna take in consideration of any yoga classes, any Pilates classes that you want to be involved with just to give your body a different range of motion, a different dynamic to open it up. Um, and this also helps prevent injuries. Speaking of injuries, unfortunately myself, I have currently pulled my hamstring and I think it was just a situation that couldn't have been avoided. I wasn't really doing anything crazy. Uh, I'll show you guys the footage probably in the upcoming weeks. The temperature just changed pretty drastically and kind of just cooled my body off, unfortunately. And after the fourth set of sprints, I just felt my hamstring tighten up. So minor bruising, but I am walking perfectly fine. I just have to just probably do some calisthenics to strengthen it up. Probably won't be able to do weights on my legs for, I don't know, probably 60 days, 
before I actually mentally feel comfortable. So there's the physical side and then there's the mental side of just dealing with injuries. And that's why I stress the importance of listening to your body and just saying, you know, I'm not gonna push it too hard today because you, the recovery process is the healing process. And that's the part where you just have to stay dedicated and remain true to the journey that you've locked into. Understanding that the destination is not the finish line. The destination is all the milestones that you hit along the way and you can rejoice at the end once you have completed that. And you know, the good thing, and I think the biggest thing you can take away from these fitness challenges is once you get to the point of building a habit, and you get to the point where it's like, oh, I did my eight weeks, I did my 90 days. Why would you break the pattern? You know, this is something that's healthy for you. It's gonna help build longevity, build up a lot of confidence with how you feel about yourself, how the world perceives you. And it just provides a lot of feel good energy, which I think we're all seeking and deserving. Um, we can easily fall victim to a sedentary lifestyle based upon what jobs and occupations that we have. So we have to find a way to break out of that because that leads to tight lower backs, stiff hips, um, just a lot of muscle imbalances and no one feels comfortable with tightness in the body. So fitness to me is the best way to release that. On the subject of stretching and recovery, things that I've been doing to take care of my hamstring, I've been doing some compression work, I've been doing cryotherapy, probably in the night, um, I'm considering in the next few weeks to do a cold plunge. This will be my first one that I'll ever do. The temperature will be about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you don't know, that is freezing cold. Um, gonna do about three to five minutes in there. And the main reason why I'm doing that is just to help fight inflammation in my body, just to make sure that this hamstring heals up properly, that there's no tightness or tenderness. Um, the other day I got a deep tissue massage with a cupping session right after that. I was really intense, but I'm so glad I did it. You know, sometimes it's just a mental hurdle that even though we feel the pain, we know this is something that our body needs and we just have to lock in, dial in and say, you know what? This is the only path forward and I have to push through this moment right now. No one ever said that this road was gonna be easy, but how I've been able to get my results is through consistency, making a commitment to myself first and just seeing it through. Um, a quote from my friend Diavion, he says, it's not about the taste anymore. We're eating for the result. And that really resonated me on so many different levels because it's not about, ah, this is good for, the flavor and and you can still eat healthy hey don't get me wrong you can still eat healthy and have flavor on your food but let's take this in consideration how many times have we had meals that just overstimulate our taste buds but it's not good for our digestive tract it's not good for our gut health um you know it causes bloating you know is not enough vegetables on our plate so here we are you know i'll tell you guys i'm 33 and it's like you have to take you have to look at life and say, you know, how much more food do I want to eat that doesn't benefit my body? That's going to make me feel sluggish. That's actually affecting my skin tones, probably causing acne. You have to say, you know what? Let me do something for me. Prioritize yourself first. And that starts in the kitchen. It's easy to neglect that because we don't see the importance of it on a day to day basis. The change with our body doesn't happen overnight, just like the change of us gaining weight doesn't happen overnight. You know, three weeks pass, three months pass, you look up and you're like, how did I go up 20 pounds on the scale? You didn't see it coming. Well, it's the same thing with losing weight. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't be so critical on yourself. Don't keep looking in the mirror, judging your waistline. You know, you're judging your hips, you're judging your thighs, you're judging your chest and all these things here and just say, you know what? I don't see it today, but next week I'll see it. Next week comes. I don't see it today. I'll see it next week. The, the thing about the human eye for us to see the change when we're viewing ourselves, it, sometimes it can take up to eight weeks for you to see the change. But the people around you are seeing the change. So when someone mentions to you, hey, you're looking good. Hey, I see you're making progress in the gym. Hey, I've noticed your body's starting to slim down. Even though you don't see that because you might be in your week one, your week two, your week three, 
you need to be in acceptance of receiving that because it is a confirmation that you are on the right path, that you are moving in the right direction. So accept those words of affirmation, let them build your spirit up so you can get back in the gym, get back in the kitchen and say, you know what, we're gonna have fun with this process. We're gonna enjoy the outcome of this and be able to celebrate something that you set in front of you that's a challenge. You set out your goals, you hit your goals, and now you can let your story be the story that inspires somebody else. So let this be your motivation for today. Go get to the gym. If you don't make it to the gym, go to the park, go ahead and put in three miles, go walk your three miles. If you're still blessed and able to run, go run a mile. Um, find something healthy to eat today. Find a workout partner, find somebody who's gonna motivate you. If you can't find a motivational partner, find a YouTube channel that motivates you. Then just get your body moving and give yourself four to eight weeks before you start judging yourself. Be disciplined. That's where the real work comes in at. So with that being said, I hope you all receive that with love because that's the way I'm sending it. And uh, you already know, man, it's Cash Got Wings. I hope you guys are gonna elevate, lift yourself up today. If you're new to the channel, like I stated earlier, like and subscribe, there's more content on the way, man. I miss you guys. Uh, leave some comments down below because uh, I'm gonna be responding to the comments here and just hearing what you guys have to say. And let's get into it for the next video, guys. Much love, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.